We're back in the 1-3 game at Capital Casino, buying for $500. First hand I end up playing, I have two queens. Player opens for 20 in front of me. I put in a raise to 65. It's folded back around the player who folds ace-king. I kid you not, he folded ace-king. Hmm. Well, it's good for me, some people folding ace-king to my raise. I then went on a long streak of playable hands that didn't get me too far. Here I raise with queen 10 suited, nothing. Then I decided to defend four or five suited when five people entered this pot, nothing. Ace 10 suited under the gun, you guessed it, they came all black. Finally, I pick up ace queen, I get the three bet and everybody folds. I'll take the money. Then they start stealing a little bit. Here I got king eight suited on the button, raised, everybody folds. We've been playing for well over two hours and I still have not seen a turn card. All the action has been pre-flop or on the flop where I fold. One player limps in, play raises to 15. I call for the 15. The small blind calls to 15 and so does the original limper. So we're gonna go four ways to this flop with $63 in. Flop comes ace, queen, five with two clubs. Pretty good flop for ace, six of clubs. We got the top pair, nut flush draw. The small blind leads right into the field for $25. Usually this is a pretty strong hand when someone leads into the field. So I'm gonna be a little bit cautious on this. I'm just gonna call, hopefully spike a club. Instead we get the four hearts. Our opponent now checks. Hmm, very interesting. What, is he checking for a trap? I don't know. I'm just going to check it back, see what the river is. River card says six of hearts. We make two pair and we miss our flush. Our opponent postures for a little bit and then decides to check it. What could this mean? Well, it could mean he was thinking about trying to steal it and decided not to. Or he has something that's worth calling and he doesn't want me to bet too big. So I decided to go for a pot size bet. He snap folds and says he missed his hand. All right, the action's starting to pick up. There's a $6 straddle, one player limps. I look down at ace-queen offsuit, make it $40. It's folded around to the small blind who calls the $40. The initial limper also puts in the call and the three of us are gonna go see a flop with 127 in it. Flop comes out, jack, jack, five, all rainbow. Well, it's a pretty good flop for someone who has a jack. Unfortunately, I do not. Both players end up checking. And here, I have a choice of either checking it back, betting small, or betting on the larger side. I decided to go on the larger side, and I think that was a mistake. I think a small bet is probably best. And uh, the small blind thinks for a while, and he doesn't have a very large stack, and he jams all in. <sighs> Uh, I really screwed this one up. Looks like I'm going to have to decide on whether he has a jack or maybe he's doing this with a pocket pair. If he has a pocket pair, I definitely should call. And in his range, I think he has probably a, quite a few pocket pairs. Hopefully it's not pocket fives. I put in the call and we see a run out of a seven of spades and then an ace of spades. So I can beat all his pocket pairs now, but he does not. He shows me... Jack eight offsuit. The very next hand, I figure if they're gonna call me with Jack eight offsuit for a $40 raise, let's see what they do for 60. I raise to 60 with ace seven of spades and everyone folds this time. I guess you just have to go bigger. Well, this is definitely the most interesting hand of the day. Some of you might have seen it already. I made a short video about it, but it was at a uh, very fast speed. Anyway, there was a limper. I raised to 15 with ace jack suited. I end up getting five players calling for $15. So we're gonna end up going to the flop with $93 in the center. And the flop comes out not very good for me. It comes king, queen, nine with two spades. The small blind now leads out for 15. I thought this was kind of an odd bet. He is, um, well, you can call him an action player. He, player next to me folds and I go, well, for $15, I'm going to take one off, see if I can spike a 10 here. Very loose call on my part, especially with players behind me. 
I do get one player to call behind me, and then the player at the end of the table raises to 45. Kind of a small raise, if you ask me. He gets uh, called by the uh, small blind, and I go, okay, well, 30 more. It's not really where I want to be, but I'm getting a decent price, I guess. So I put in the 30, and so does the other player. And the four of us are going to see a turn card with $273 in it. Just hoping and praying for a 10. That's not a spade. Instead, we get the three of spades. I'm pretty much done with the hand. Small blind checks. I check. It gets checked around. River card comes as eight of diamond. Small blind checks again. I check. It gets checked around to the player in last position who bets out for $80. Now, this bet seems very, very weak to me. And the small blind probably thinks the same thing as he puts in the call for the $80. And here I can just simply fold this and give it up because basically I have nothing. But I think one week bet and one week call gives me an opportunity to make a little play. So I decided to check raise for $400. My thinking behind this check raise is that I really don't think anyone has anything that strong. I think maybe they have one pair, maybe a week, two pair at best. I don't think they have a straight. I don't think they have a flush. So a big check raise on my part, and I still have somewhat of a tight image, especially with the player in the small blind. He gives me a whole lot of respect. First player ends up folding quickly, and then the player in the small blind tanks forever. And I'm just going to edit a lot of this out. But basically, he shows that he has a flush. He has the seven five of spades, and he's trying to think whether he should call me with his last 200 and what forty dollars some people would call this player a calling station also i thought i was going to get called as soon as he turned over that he had a flush i thought i was dead but he started talking about how tight i was and uh, he gave me a whole lot of respect in fact he ended up folding i was very fortunate on this hand if i thought this player had any chance of having a flush i would have never even attempted this play because he is very very likely to call down if he has a flush and uh, for some reason he gave me a whole lot more credit than i probably deserve and he ended up folding this hand and i was fortunate that i didn't end up punting away some more chips after this hand the player left and so did one other action player and then one player with a deep stack also left. So the game was not quite as good. So I decided to hang it up for the day and come back the following day. Well, I'm back at uh, Capital for another $500 buy-in. Haven't had very much to do the first 50 minutes or so. Uh, we decided to do a $10 bomb pot. And we have seven players in this hand. I peeked down at King, Queen of Diamonds. Pretty good hand for a bomb pot. And the flop comes out king high with one diamond and two hearts. It gets checked over to me. I'm definitely going to be putting out a bet here. I decided to go for 40. It's a little over half pot. Player to my direct left puts in a, a pretty quick call. Usually quick calls means they have a drawing hand or they have a monster. I think it's more likely they have a drawing hand. The obvious draw? Well, it's a flush draw. Turn card comes is another king. And at this point, I should probably just jam all in. He only has like $190 left. But instead, I decided to bet $100. And of course, he calls rather quickly. And I'm going, oh, Doug, how can we just shove all in? You know, he really wants to call with his draw. River card comes as a 10 of hearts. I bet because I think I'm going to be calling anyway. And of course, he snap calls, shows me the ace nine of hearts, and I just feel like a total idiot for not putting them all in on the turn. I decided to add $500 to my stack, and uh, the action's starting to pick up. There's a $6 straddle on this hand. I opened for $25 with King Jack. It gets folded back to the players in the blinds, and I end up getting two callers. So we're going to go three ways to a flop with $82 in the center. And the flop comes jack nine three with two diamonds. Really good flop for my hand. Um, I haven't really won a pot today, so I'm going to try to win this one. I make a bet of $50. Hopefully this will do the trick. Or if I get called by one of these sticky players, I'm going to really build a pot. They both end up folding. 
so I'm quite happy. I finally won my first pot, and it's a little over two hours into the session. Well, I finally got my big hand of the day. I got two jacks from under the gun, open for 15. I ended up getting two callers. Both players have pretty good sized stacks. Uh, the low jack has about 1,400, and the player in the blind has, well, I guess about 1,200 in front of him. So we're going to go off to a flop with $48 in it. And the flop comes out 7-4 deuce rainbow. Pretty good flop for two jacks. It's checked to me. I'm going to go ahead and continue for like a standard sizing. So I make it $20. I would do this with most of my range. Ace kings, big cards, and of course pocket jacks. I get two quick calls and we see a turn card of a deuce of diamonds. Another fabulous card. I shouldn't have any problems unless someone's calling me with a deuce. Well, it's possible, but I decided to go ahead and lead out again. And I only get one call of this time for the $55. Okay, just hoping to fade whatever he's drawn to. And it is a five of clubs. I'm pretty sure I'm good here, but I don't think there's any value in betting, but there is a, some value in catching someone bluffing. So I decided to check it over to him, and he wagered $160. Pretty big bet. It's probably a good size for a bluff. But just in case, I'm going to think about this for a moment, trying to figure out how he can make a straight. Be really tough. He would have to hit a gut shot. Could he have still played a big hand? Sure, but uh, with the size stacks we had, I think he would fast play his big hands. So after some thought, I decided, well, I'm just going to call this. There's a high likelihood that he's bluffing. I put in the call. He says, you got me. And he rolls over 10 nine of diamonds. So he picked up a flush draw as he floated the flop for my small $20 bet size. I don't blame him for trying. Uh, I just wasn't going to go anywhere. Well, I finally made it back to even just in time to pick up two kings from the low jack. There was a $7 straddle on this, so I opened to $30 after one player limps. And I end up getting, well, five people putting in the call. So there's $183 in here. I got a big pair. Let's see if we can hit something. Flop comes out, king, jack, five with two hearts. So we smash this thing. Only problem about smashing a, a flop with like pocket kings there isn't too much that your opponent can have because you control all the top pairs. Most likely they're going to be on some sort of draw, like a straight draw or a flush draw. But it's been a very long time since I flopped a big hand after raising. To my surprise, the player in the small blind decides to lead out for $45. This feels like a feeler bet. Maybe he has something like a, uh, maybe he has the other king and wants to know whether it's any good. The player to my right puts in a quick call for the 45. He's been playing a, a lot of hands, and if he flops a pair, he's probably going to take one off. It's possible that he has the draw, but not likely in my opinion. I decided to put it in a small raise to 140. My goal is to get the player who led out for $45 committed, and he would either fold or stack off. The player in the cutoff, who's a fairly solid player, puts in a very quick call for the 140. And is folded back around to the small blind who kind of flashes his cards and folds quickly. The action comes back around to the player on my right and he decides to put in the call for the 140. So the three of us are going to go see a turn card. So I'm pretty certain that the player in the cutoff has a flush draw and it's probably the nut flush draw. And since he's a pretty good player, I'm thinking that he has something like ace, ten of hearts. Maybe something like queen, ten of hearts. And with either of those hands, he has a ton of equity. And as you know, I screwed up that bomb pot earlier where I had the king, queen of diamonds. And I didn't shove on the person on the turn when they had a flush draw. And as Zeus says, the best way to stop making mistakes is stop repeating them. So when this turn card comes, if it is a non-heart, it is going to be a big enough bet to get all those chips in. Well, turn card comes and it is a eight of clubs. Perfect. 
Well, it does put up another flush draw, just in case someone had a king of clubs and another club as a kicker. Player to my right checks. I'm not too worried about him. Player to my left has about 300 and change left. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and stick it all in there. I put out a bet at $400. He snap calls. The other player snap folds. Tell him I have a set. We see a run out of a jack of clubs. We make a full house. He snap folds it. And uh, we're going to take down a big one. Well, I haven't been running the greatest uh, with my big pairs this last week or so. So when I win this one, it feels really good. Poker in general has very high variance. Uh, my whole week basically came down to these two hands. The ace jack of hearts where I bluffed and did not get called. And flopping a set of kings against someone who had a, a big draw themselves and didn't get there. So... Either one of those hands go the other way, or both of them go the other way. It would have been a really ugly week. But instead, we ended up booking a nice win, and uh, it feels good. Anyway, I do appreciate you watching, and thank you for all your support. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down in the comment section, and I'll get back to you. Until next time, good luck at the tables, and we'll see you back here soon.